right? And you would see that a lot of these things you would agree with. Some of that would be, you know, against the current Christian doctrine, but you see a lot of similarity. So obviously it's an Arabic word, right? You didn't think it's an English word, right? And uh, if you were to open an Arabic Bible, you wouldn't see God, you would see Allah. Okay, so that's close enough. So number one thing, Allah represents or is the name of the, the only one, the only deity, the only one worthy of worship, right? So people have taken many God, right? Some people take themselves as their own, as God, right? Their arrogance as God, their desires as God, statues as God, whatever. The only one worthy of worship is known as Allah. What does worship mean? At most, love, right? So the true essence of worship is that Allah, the God, the one who created you, the one who chose that Zubair should be created. He's even worthy of creation and worthy of existence in 2018. Likewise for all of you is Allah and he is the one who I should have at most love for. And then at the same time, at most submission. So if he says, don't go near the tree, I realize that I shouldn't go near the tree. Even though I don't know why, and sometimes I may know partial why, but I still submit. Okay, one of his name is, in Arabic is called Rab, okay, which is translated as the Lord, okay? But that word is very comprehensive and it includes the creator of everything, right? So Allah is the ultimate creator of this phone, right? Even though it's manufactured and manifested by some other company, the ideas, the facilitation, everything else, the plan is from Allah. Had he not willed, this would not have existed. So Allah is the ultimate creator of things, objects, ideas, and so on and so forth. At the same time, right now I own the phone, right? I did not create it, I own it from a worldly perspective. So Allah is the complete owner as well. Even though I may buy things, sell things, eventually Allah is the owner. Right? So if I lose it, right, I should be, oh my, where's my phone? Why, is, why do I always keep losing my phone? No, at the end of the day, Allah is the owner. He gifted it to me. He facilitated it for me to have it. And if it goes away, then it's also from Allah. It belongs to Allah. It always belonged to Allah. And then finally, he's also the planner. So right now, Mercedes can manufacture a car and then sell it to you. They're not the owner anymore, right? And then you are the owner. But when you are the owner, you're not completely in charge. Somebody could come and you know, break it in, or you, know, you might have an accident, or somebody may put it on fire, or whatever, right? But for the creation of Allah, He is still in charge. Nothing can harm or benefit them except by the will of Allah. He's completely in charge. He's a planner. He's a sustainer. He's a nourisher, so on and so forth. Okay, He is the most merciful, right? There's no one that has more mercy towards us than Allah, right? So if I want my sins to be forgiven, the one I need to go to is Allah, right? None of you can have a more sympathetic heart for me than Allah. And, and, I mean, neither my parents, okay? He's the ever living. So he has always been there. And his life is perfect and complete, which means he's never unaware. He does not sleep, he does not get tired, he is not dependent on food and nourishment, so on and so forth. If it was, it would not be a complete life, right? Okay, uh, no one can intercede, as I said, right? So no one really owes, Allah does not owe anyone anything. So I have nothing in front of Allah, my parents have nothing, Muhammad, peace be upon him, has nothing, any other messenger, prophet, we believe has nothing, as Allah has told us. And also, you know, you can think about it, has nothing that Allah owes to them. So, if Allah does not want to forgive me, if every creation of Allah goes to Allah, say, forgive is bare, and Allah doesn't want to forgive me, that means I don't deserve to be forgiven, right? Because who is the most wise? Who is the most merciful? So none has the power to intercede except if Allah chooses to honor someone, right? So let's say Allah chooses to honor Jesus, peace be upon him, or Muhammad, peace be upon him, and then say, you know, intercede for your people, right? So that's showing an honor for them. But they would only intercede for the people who Allah approves, right? For example, we know there's a father 
of Ibrahim Abraham, right? You guys know Abraham, right? He is not going to paradise, right? And if Abraham cannot intercede for him, right? Nor is he worthy of inter 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 to be interceded, right? So that's something to be very important to realize the power of Allah as well as the mercy and justice of Allah. Okay, and he has complete knowledge. So I can't surprise Allah, right? So Satan did not surprise Allah by disobeying him, right? From the completeness and perfection of the knowledge of Allah is no one can surprise him. And then all these things and everything else is unique and exclusive to Allah. There's no one like him. So if I'm talking about complete knowledge, complete hearing, all that is exclusive to Allah. It does not belong to Muhammad, peace be upon him, nor any other men or Satan or jinn or anybody else. Uh, continuing on, he is the most powerful, right? So nothing, one second. Okay, yeah. So nothing can go except by his agreement, except by his approval, right? And this is something I want to talk about. So he has two types of will, right? Because if I'm saying, Nothing can happen except by the approval of Allah. You go, what about that guy who killed like a five-year-old? Right? Is that approved by Allah? So that's why it's important to understand there are two types of will of Allah. Okay? The one will is basically the universal will. So that will is nobody can escape that. So when I was born, I didn't have a choice. Right? That day, that moment, boom. Right? When will I die? Right? When I'll be healthy, when I'll be sick, you know, what time I'll be rich, what time I'll not be rich, so on and so forth. All these things are complete in control of Allah. Anybody who is very, very arrogant and denying the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even that person cannot escape the will of Allah. Okay? Then there's other forms of will of Allah, which is his legal will. Right? And he gives a choice. So like as we started in the beginning, Satan had a choice. Allah wanted him to prostrate but Allah did not force him to prostrate, right? So uh, that choice is also from Allah, right? Had Allah wanted, that choice could have been taken away, right or wrong? So, so you have a choice in certain sayings, so likewise do not kill innocent people, that's a choice, right? If Allah wants, he can take that away, but sometimes he leaves it, and that leaving has a greater wisdom, right? Just like Allah told angels, yes, I will create an, uh, human beings and they will shed blood, but that even has a greater wisdom, right? And we can uh, talk about it if needed. But the point is there are two types of will, something that is imposed and something that is, you have a choice, right? So Adam had a choice about the tree. He was physically and environmentally capable of eating from that tree, but God did not want him to create, to eat from the tree. So having said that, ultimately everything is under the wisdom of Allah, right? Is in, in, under the wisdom of Allah. So whatever happens, it will be under the wisdom. So even if 